Hello. Hello. Listeners of Trench Radio, welcome to Open Mic Radio. This is Myrtle Harbajanka, and today I'm with Caleb Heichel from the Sun Harmonic. Hello. And we are broadcasting through the facilities of Trench Radio 92.7 CFFF FM in Peterborough, Nagoji, Vinong, Canada. And this is actually the first episode of um, open mic radio this season. So yeah, you're the first guest. <laughs> oh, thanks for yeah. surprising me with that. I did not know. Yeah. Cool. So wow. um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a what an honor. Hello, Peterborough. Uh, I do want to say a quick hello to my friend Peter, who lives in Peterborough, who is uh, putting me up on his couch tonight while I'm on tour. Uh, we mm. need more people like Peter around yeah. there in Ontario to uh, help musicians out and. Give them a place to stay. Yeah, exactly. Some tap water. Yeah. I'm excited to try the Peterborough tap water. And I think so. Uh, I think Peter is listening right now. So, hey, buddy, what's up? Can't <laughs> wait to see you. <laughs> I can't say Peterborough tap water is the best, but mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be the, I'll be the judge of that. It has, an, it has a nice, um, unique taste mm. to it. Yeah. <laughs> this is my first time in Peterborough since... Uh, I think 2019. Okay. Yeah. So That's it was really long. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean the pandemic. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it was really nice driving up the 115. Uh, I, I had done it so many times before the pandemic, and I haven't since. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it really was like it was like oh wow, nice to be back. Nice. Yeah. And the last time you were in Peterborough in 2019 was it for a show? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was on tour. I was doing uh, at that point. I was doing a 10th anniversary. Uh, Sun Harmonic Tour. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so that was like, you know, five years ago. Um, and I was out for about a, like a week and a half. So I, I, I thought that was a big tour. I had like 10 shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, this time around, this is my third show of the tour, and I have 24 yeah. shows. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> so um, I, 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 I went a little above and beyond yeah. with the booking. But um, I knew that I wanted to play Peterborough. Yeah, I knew that, <laughs> and I was <laughs> going around. Um, it was a show, and it was. I'm trying to remember where it was. Um, the spill. Do you remember the spill? The spill. I think that's what it was called. The spill. It was downtown. I haven't heard of the spill, but I also it, came here in 2019, mm-hmm. so we shut down. I think it. I think it was closed. Okay. Um, very soon after. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure it was a spill. I'm sorry if I'm wrong. Uh, Peter, what's the answer? <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, it was downtown. It was a, a really, really cool, um, just little cafe bar kind of venue. Um, and I, I played there a couple times. But yeah, then it shut down. And so I, I didn't know where to play. I didn't know where to book a show in Peterborough because that was the venue that I always played. Um, so I started reaching out and I asked Peter, actually. And he said, there's a new spot called Jethro's. Mm-hmm. So that's where I'm playing. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And I imagine the last time you played in Peterborough was a good experience. Like, what was the audience like? I always had uh, good friends here. Oh. Uh, I still do. Um, some of them had moved away to Ottawa um, by by this point, at least. They That's where they are. But there was a good um, amount of time in there, like 20, 2010s, like in the middle of 2010s or so, where we had such a big group of friends from... Uh, music college my friend Dirk Boone was living down here um, and we would do like house show type thing I mean like bonfires with like me playing with an acoustic guitar Mm -hmm. but we would do shows down at the spill and everyone would be there so it it was awesome it was always awesome and we had like our friends would all get up and play because we were all musicians so we would all get up and play covers or I would get up and sing and invite people to sing along with me or we would all be up on stage there's a really you know cool picture of us like five or six of us squeezing onto the stage all at once um so it was always like very communal and very fun yeah yeah i'm very intrigued by the spill so i'm looking it up right now yeah let's see (laughs) (laughs) the spill (laughs) peterborough the spill peterborough it might be one of these permanently closed it is yep. a permanently closed yep, coffee yep, yep. bar. Spill coffee bar. Um, wow. Yeah, and and so this is a good um, opportunity for me to tell this story. This is what happened when I started booking this tour. I honestly, I sat down like 
I started booking this tour in January, and I only just finished booking it last week mm-hmm. <laughs> before I started going on tour. Um, because I sat down in January with a list of venues that I had um, that I had been building for years mm-hmm. through the 2010s when I was going out and touring. And the list of venues that I had was no longer relevant. Oh, yeah. Most of the venues that I used to play yeah. are closed. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's sad, but obviously it, we're not surprised by that because of the pandemic, right? Like, obviously music venues just usually would have a hard time staying mm-hmm. open. Like, I, I applaud any anyone who, who can do it. Um, but the pandemic came along and... Honestly, like most of the venues that I used to play, a lot of these small venues around Ontario, they're they're shuttered. And mm-hmm. I would be Googling, oh, hey, this venue, I want to see if who, who's the booker. And it would come up with that red bar on Google yeah. permanently closed. So yeah. I was deleting so many venues off the list that like the list was getting shorter and shorter. So then I just started going, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? So I start Googling. Like the name of a city and music venue, Peterborough music venue, Ottawa music venue, mm-hmm. and just trying to find music venues. And the upside of all of this and the pandemic is that it's made way for new music venues to open. Yeah, and almost half of my tour is new music venues mm-hmm. that didn't exist before the pandemic, and that started up maybe. 2022, 20, 23, yeah. like they're, they're brand new venues that are just getting up and going. So then an artist like me comes along, like, it's not like I'm famous, but I'm, I ha- I'm passionate and I want to get out there and play. And I come to them and, and they're open arms and they, they're so excited. And it's a really cool experience for me actually, mm-hmm. because then like I'm getting in on the ground level with them too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, Jethro's, I don't, bl- I think Jethro's was around before the pandemic. I might be wrong, but it's relatively, it was, yeah. relatively new. Um, at least the new hip spot, right? Yeah. Um, like, because if other venues are shutting down then people go, okay, where do we go now? Right? Mm. Um, and so, yeah, like, I, I mean, Jethro's has a crazy calendar booked, like live music and live events all the time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's really cool for us to get in. Mm. Um and before I forget, we do, we do have um, locals uh, opening up. Um, it's a guy named Nick, who's a friend of Peter's, <laughs> um, and they uh, they play him. Him and his buddy are playing as the Murphy Browns, and apparently they've been like playing banjos beside the river for twenty years. I think is the the folklore. <laughs> like they've been playing forever, but have never played a proper show, and they've always had this name called the Murphy Browns for themselves. And this is the first time that they're playing a live show which is super cool and i'm so i'm so stoked um so they're gonna open the show for me um and it'll be eight o'clock nice yeah, yeah and so close. yeah it is tonight eight o'clock it's tonight yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah um so i was gonna ask about the sun harmonic is it just you or do you or have you had a band in the past mm-hmm. or, yeah, yeah it's a good it's a question um it's a good thing that we have an hour on the show to talk about. Um, the the short answer is that it has been just me for most of its life. Um, the Sun Harmonic is now 16 years old, um, which is older than like most of my friends' kids. Um, I I started it in 2009, um, and it was a solo act for a very long time and I started it in 2009 and uh kept it going until I added a drummer and then I added a bassist but that was like 10 years down the road so by 2018 we were a band but I was still releasing solo albums as a Sun Harmonic and I was still going on tours as a Sun Harmonic and then the band would play a show and it was the Sun Harmonic um so it was a little bit confusing and it started to get too complicated and um, it was hard to separate them. Like I would be booking shows for the band and sending them a, a website that had my latest folk album called Coast to Coast on it. Um, so I decided like early, well, I decided in December, but I implemented it in early January where I've now separated 
the Sun Harmonic from my solo act. Mm -hmm. um, from here on out, the Sun Harmonic is a rock band. It's a rock okay. and roll band. It's me and my friend Dave on drums and Ian on bass. And we are a rock and roll band. And we have some videos that we've released of some new material that's rock and roll. And we have an album that we're working on that is a really loud, fast, fun mm -hmm. rock and roll album. And then I am now, as a solo artist, um, proudly sharing my name, my real name. Um, for the first time since I released solo albums before I was a Sun Harmonic. So this is the first time I'm releasing a Caleb Heichel album in um, 16 years. Mm -hmm. um, which is exciting and it's and it's nerve wracking. Like it's kind of terrifying. Like I've spent so long building up the name the Sun Harmonic that like any one in business would would say like why or how could you walk away from it? But I'm not. I'm just kind of letting it turn into something else. Mm -hmm. And so Caleb Heichel really now is like it is my name. It's my real mm -hmm. name. Um, and I'm just gonna go out there and like teach people my name and teach people how to pronounce my name. Um, that's what I was always worried about, and that's why I came up with the stage name, the Sun Harmonic. Really, was because um, instead of Caleb Heichel. All of my teachers in school would say, uh, in attendance, uh, Kaleeb, Kaleeb Hakeli, or Kaleb Hakili, always. Mm -hmm. Everywhere I, I go. It's still, I correct people all the time. And, um, yeah, I just don't want to be af af afraid of that anymore. Mm -hmm. I just want to, like, go out there and teach people yeah. how to pronounce it um, and, and use it proudly. And um, so my solo tours, my solo albums are Caleb Michael. Yeah. And the Sun Harmonic is this, like, <laughs> very long storied catalog of <laughs> random music a lot of it is solo but um yeah from here on out it's gonna be like a rock and roll band and i'm, I'm so excited for yeah. it honestly because then it means that i can do whatever i want with yeah. that and it can get as loud and weird like we wrote a we're writing even though we're working on an album right now that's halfway done in the studio we're writing our new album and i'm bringing it to the band and only writing it with them and only with the electric guitar and it is so rock and roll like it's there's a song that's like a punk song called uh, garbage man like like i can, i'm just so excited to let it go and let it get like really weird and crazy because i s can still do whatever i want with my like folk music mm -hmm. on the side right yeah, yeah separate them like really separate them instead of trying to give them the same name and squeeze them into the same yeah yeah so that's 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 the short answer. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, yeah, it was like a very insightful story, especially like with your name and separating that. And yeah, thank yeah. you for sharing that. Yeah, thanks for asking. I mean, it's, I, I know that right now, I'm hoping it gets to the point where it's just people know what it is. They mm -hmm. go, oh, he was the Sun Harmonic, but now he's going under his real... Like, I hope that it eventually would get to the point where I'm not explaining it over and over again. But right now, I really am like in my first stages of going out there and mm -hmm. doing my thing and people kind of going, Oh, what, what's he doing now? That, that's yeah. weird. He was always the sun harmonic. Um, so, so yeah, it's, you know, it, it just takes time and, mm -hmm. and patience. Like I, I knew when I decided to do it and I did the first time that I like changed the sun harmonic Facebook page or the Instagram page to Caleb Heichel, I was getting messages from people right away who got notifications being like, is everything okay? Like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, why, why are you getting rid of the Sun Harmonic? And I was like, I'm not, it's, I'm moving it over here. And ah, like, yeah. I knew that it was going to be a bit of a bombshell, but, um, I, I knew I had to do it. I felt really good about doing it, you yeah. know, and I didn't want to worry about doing it anymore. I just thought, let's, uh, let's, let's try something new. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and so <clears throat> My Mind is Like a Radio, your new album. Mm -hmm. um, that is a solo album under Caleb Heiko? Yes. Okay, awesome. Yes, yes it is. Yeah. Um, oh, I meant to bring in a vinyl. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, it's, it's Caleb Heiko. It says Caleb Heiko on the front. It very clearly is me because the album cover is this beautiful uh, pop art illustration of my face, like of mm -hmm. my head that's split open with a piano coming out of it and radio waves coming out of it. That was an idea that I had and gave to an artist, a uh, really good friend of mine named Ben Vandevorn, who lives in St. Thomas. He's an old punk friend of mine from high school. He's a tattoo artist. And, um, and he took it and extrapolated it into the coolest album art 
uh, and people are really loving it and commenting on it, um, you know, because it just is weird and different yeah. and like doesn't look like anything I would have done before, <laughs> which is kind of the theme, like yeah. just like surprise people with something, right? Um, so yeah, so it's it's very um, it's very much me. Mm-hmm. Kay- it's a Caleb Heichel album because yeah. there's because no one else is is playing on it, um, so it makes sense for me to release under my name. Like the only other person performing anything on it is my partner Jess she mm-hmm. sings some ooze on one song mm-hmm. and then she sings on the mind like a radio recording she sings this little background vocal part it's mm-hmm. me and her going mind like a radio mm-hmm. and uh other than that it's it's all me the mm-hmm. drums bass guitar trumpet mm-hmm. vocals piano uh, everything mm-hmm. um so yeah that's like you won't find it on the sun harmonic yeah um it is Caleb Eichel. Yeah. Um, and it's the first studio album that I released since like 20 or 2008. And those ones are pretty rough. Like they're lo-fi basement recordings. Cause I was mm-hmm. a teenager trying to learn how to record. So if you, if you go from like that studio album to this studio album, you would, if you didn't know that I went off and did the sun harmonic, you would look at that and go like, why did it take them 16 years to release an album? Oh. And why does this <laughs> one sound so bad yeah. compared to this one? Yeah. But obviously the explanation is like, well, I walked away. I did this. I did that. Um, and mm-hmm. yeah. And so that's, that's yeah. kind of the, that's, that's where we are now. Um, this album art um, mm-hmm. by your friend who's also a tattoo art- artist. Yeah. Would you ever get this album art tattooed? On yourself. <laughs> he, that's a really good question too. He has uh, told me that the the radio on it. Yeah. Um, he said that would be a cool tattoo. Yeah. I'm thinking about it. I really am actually. Maybe maybe just your whole face too. My my entire <laughs> head on my own face. Um, no, like I want to do a, a a tattoo on my left shoulder. Mm-hmm. All my friends went high school they all got these cool punk rock tattoos like four leaf clovers or like slanche or something like um they they had these tattoos on their shoulder um uh, i've always wanted to to do that too mm-hmm. but now i'm like 34 and i'm like am i gonna do a tattoo or not <laughs> um i yeah i'm thinking about it for sure mm-hmm. he he definitely was like yeah we should do that yeah. we should do that um and yeah he he works back home in st thomas as a tattoo artist um, at uh, Limitless Tattoo is where he is um, and he's just an incredible artist and I like I knew that the idea that I had was going to work with mm-hmm. his with his vision and his mm-hmm. style and everything but it just turned out to be so much better than I mm-hmm. thought it would mm-hmm. it's just like so cool <laughs> like, it's so weird and 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 it was a lot of fun to also design the vinyl like based on his album art I then like copied and pasted like the lightning bolts that are on it and the radio waves and, and whatever it was and the radio and like just copied and pasted and moved like his art around to design the vinyl, which was really mm-hmm. cool because usually I would come up with everything myself. Like yeah. I would be working with only my ideas, but like he gave me a whole bunch of pieces to work with and then mm-hmm. I just kind of turned them into something yeah. cool. But like really it's, I mean, the credit is, is his. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would you say you've always, or would you rather, sorry, let me reframe the question. Mm-hmm. Do you prefer, um, working as a solo artist or with a band? Do you have a preference over one or the other or is... I, I love both for different reasons and that's probably why I, I juggle both at the same time mm-hmm. too, because I can't really do one at a time. Mm-hmm. Um, like I, I really am right now, even though I have this new album, my mind is like a radio, which was a surprise to begin with. Like making that album didn't, it wasn't planned. Um, and it kind of actually kind of sidetracked and like hijacked everything I was doing at the time. Um, I can get in more into that, but, um, like I, before that was working on a solo album and was working on a band album at the same time because I just kind of have the material and a solo album is something I can work on at any point, seven days a week, any time of the morning or night or Mm -hmm. afternoon, I can do what I want. And it's always very personal 
Like mm-hmm. it's very cathartic work because a lot of the time it's very personal songs. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas the band stuff I try and work on in collaboration with the guys. Um, so then it's, so then that like their schedule obviously comes into play or say like the beginning of making a, a band album has to be done with the guys mm-hmm. um, in the room and the way that we record the way that we have recorded since our very first EP that we did in December 2019 we did this EP that we released um, ended up releasing one month into the pandemic that's the first thing that we ever recorded together um, and we did our album that we ended up recording we ended up doing that the same way where we're just playing live in a room Mm-hmm. live off the floor um which is super old school and a lot of people don't do that anymore like technology has allowed us to do a lot of multi-tracking that is very um easy and makes everything sound very very good mm-hmm. um and you can put everything into a click track and it's very cookie cutter uh which sounds negative but it's not it's not a bad thing like it it helps make things sound very very tight and clean and good but i personally love getting the the guys in the room behind their instruments and just playing it with them so that there's uh energy Mm -hmm. to it um and you capture the energy and you wouldn't get that if you played separately usually the drummer would play and then the bassist on another day maybe would play along with the drummer and then the guitar, you put the guitars on and record them all separate. Um, with us, the drums and the bass are done at the same time. Usually the guitar that I'm doing off the floor is the one that's in the recording. And then I double it and do studio things. But, um, that's why I love doing the band mm-hmm. stuff. Um, because it, there's things that happen that wouldn't have happened if it was just me recording that song if it was me recording that song it would be like straight down the middle of the road all of my ideas would go into the recording for example there's a song that we're working on called glory days where we did nine takes of the song and the guys got you know you get you do it over and over again so many times that the guys you know you start to get a little bored or you want to do something different so then dave improvised this really cool like metal kind of thing on this one part of the song where it was this like boom on the snare and he had never done it before and it now is in the recording of the song and it's like the coolest part of the song and it's only because we forced ourselves to do it like that and at the beginning of that take i looked at dave and just said played a little faster and that's it that's all he needed to hear for it for the take to kind of like light on fire and then turn into this amazing recording with so much energy in it Mm -hmm. um i had this has happened to me a few times uh while we were recording that take i had goosebumps Mm -hmm. like i had i had shivers because it sounded so good and felt so good and i was like oh man don't make a mistake like don't screw up this perfect take of this song because it's perfect if you can just get to the end it's like running a hundred meter race and (laughs) and and like you don't want to trip like you're running so fast and you just want to get to the end without making a mistake and then you can fall down and do whatever you want to but like you 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 don't (laughs) you can't make a mistake you know um yeah and then the solo stuff is just totally different it's like me like alone in a room like happy sad like i've brought myself to tears singing songs about like people who have passed away that i've written songs about and i'm recording the vocals by myself alone in a room a lot of the time i'm by myself working on this stuff so it's you know the the experience is weird it's Mm -hmm. it's strange because there aren't it's it's nothing like working on the band stuff where Mm -hmm. there's an engineer in the room a producer in the room if i get excited other people get excited or i can feed off them or they can feed off me there's none of that like it's me and my dog. <laughs> if Jess is at work, which usually is when I'm recording, um, then like, you know, I go upstairs like to my dog and pet him. And I'm like, oh, your daddy just did a good take, and he's like, oh, I don't care. Like, give me cookies. Um, so yeah, that's it, it. There's two extremes for sure. <laughs>
Um, I do have a question about the album itself. My mind is like a radio. Like, where does the title come from? Uh, the song, the first song. And where does yeah. that come from? <laughs> <laughs> that comes from um, an experience I had waking up at four in the morning. Um, what happened was I had played a show in uh, I had played a show in uh, um, what's it called? Oh boy, um, Yorkville in Toronto. Outside of Yorkville, there's a restaurant, a new restaurant called Joni. And um, it's really is like just a fancy, fancy dancy, <laughs> high scale, uh, upper, upper scale restaurant. Um, I showed up with like a suit on, played a bunch of piano and uh, guitar and sang songs for people having like $300 dinners. Um, so I was hired to do that. Um, and I came home from that gig and thought like, oh, you know, no one, no one, I didn't even bring vinyl. Like it wasn't a, a, a gig. It was, it was more like a, a, you know, a job, uh, as a musician. So I, I showed up and did that and had a good time. Um, but what was cool was that like, I was outside of Yorkville, which is the old in Toronto is the old stretch of the folk scene in the sixties. So when I was taking the cab there, I, I went by the what used to be the riverboat, which is where like Neil Young, Bruce Coburn, Joni Mitchell, Gordon Lightfoot, all of these guys had literally made a career for themselves. Um, so I saw where it used to be. I Googled the address, saw where it used to be. The cab took me right by it and then turned around the corner and that's where the Joni was. I don't even know if they named it after Joni Mitchell, but like, I mean, even that was that coincidence was cool. So I played that show, uh, came home, Went to bed at like 1.30 maybe <laughs> um, and woke up at 4 o'clock with a song in my head and it was, immediately was, my mind is like a radio. I had that in my head. I couldn't get it out of my head. I kind of kept putting together like, oh, the idea of getting a song stuck in your head, which ironically what is what was happening, but it was like getting a song stuck in your head turning the channels, turning the dial, different genres, come on, whatever it is. But I was picturing it as like an upbeat soul song, like a four to the floor Motown esque kind of soul song. As if I was like Otis Redding with a mic on the stage, um, like performing the vocal. And that's how I was writing the vocals in my head. So honestly, I wrote most of the song except for the bridge lying in bed. I couldn't get back to sleep because I thought, Oh, this song's pretty good actually. Uh, and then, uh, I had to go to work, um, at six 30 in the morning. So I spent like two net, like I slept for like no time at all. I was exhausted from the gig. And then I was going to work a double shift at the hospital where I work. I'm a healthcare worker. And at that point I was working in the kitchen. So I went to work at six 30 in the morning and then worked the three meals all the way until seven 30 at night. And I went to work with that song in my head and like just tried to make sure that I didn't forget it because I couldn't even make a demo or anything. It was so early. My girlfriend was sleeping. <laughs> my dog was sleeping. I couldn't even make a demo of it or anything. So I just had to keep singing in my head over and over again. And I even ended up writing another song that day, I think, as far as I remember, um, which is the second song on the record called All Day, which is about working all day. <laughs> um so I kind of just like all of a sudden had this like weird burst of confidence in like writing songs in my head again, which I had done a bunch. But the weird thing about this, like it was a bit too surreal because at this point I hadn't written a song in three years. Like I, I was in the middle of or at the end of a crazy writer's block um, and I didn't know what was going to happen I didn't I, like I honestly was having a very hard time thinking about writing more songs because I just hadn't for so long and then over the next like week and a half I wrote the entire album um, and every song was written in my head I, I didn't have an instrument in my hand at all I was just singing songs in my head and hearing the instrumentation hearing the guitars hearing the piano move around and the vocals and I would come home from work 
with like a new folk song like Dive or um, the song To Say Goodbye on the piano. And I would come and home and try and figure out the chords, but I had it in my head and I knew where the chords were moving around and everything. And I just tried to write the lyrics down. Um, and that really is the structure or the foundation of the entire album is that it was all written the same way and then recorded the same way where I ended up recording every song, uh, off the floor, uh, in my studio, uh, one piece at a time. Actually, the way that I was kind of saying it's weird to record. When I record solo, that's how I have to do it, obviously, one piece at a time. Mm -hmm. So I would record one song a day. I just woke up in the morning and started recording the drums for Mind Like a Radio. The next day, I did the song all day. So every song was recorded in one single day, um, which meant that they were minimal compared to what I would usually do, the big blown-out productions I, I've have done before. Um, and yeah, and that's... And so that... It's as if, like... That song, it became the name of the album because that song, My Mind is Like Radio, almost explains the making of the album. Like, the fact that every song is a different genre mm -hmm. and that I wrote them all in my head. Um, it's very literal um, in a way, but I don't think it's my experience alone. A lot of people get songs stuck in their head. A lot of mm -hmm. people can you know, can't get a song out of their head. They sing along, they, they sing songs to themselves, whatever it is, or you can like hear, you know, Nirvana's, you know, the, like, like smells like teen spirit. Like you like recordings and sound are like engraved into us. Um, so that's what I was trying to, to write about really. Yeah. Um, I love, I love the story, especially, um, a few having that, three-year block and then suddenly making a whole album yeah. in a week yeah like yeah. It, it just I, it was it was awesome <laughs> honestly like it it brought me back to life like yeah. i i was a, i was a little lifeless at, at that point i some of the songs reflect that there's some lyrics that are definitely um telling of like how i was feeling um i had a lot to say but I didn't, I wasn't writing songs, mm -hmm. but I had a lot to say. I had a lot of things that had happened to talk about and it just turned into an album. Um, and no one knew that I was having a writer's block because I was releasing music. I was releasing albums. Coast. I released Coast to Coast. I released It's All Okay Thanks to You. Were was, they older stuff? Then? Yeah, I was, yeah. Old, yeah. Oh yeah. Like these, the songs I'm, that I was releasing were some of them were like 10 years old and I just hadn't recorded them yet. Like mm -hmm. sign on the road was an old song and I put it out and it ended up having more success than any other recording that I had. Um, and coast to coast was an album I worked on for five years. So those songs were five to eight years old. Um, and then this album was all brand new songs that I recorded very quickly. Like I wrote it in like two weeks, recorded it in about two and a half weeks and then I sat on it for a bit to try and figure out how to release it. And no one knew I was working on any of it. For, for one, no one knew I was having a writer's block because I was releasing music. People would have just thought, oh, he's probably writing a song every day. I was terrified to even like tell people. I think I probably told one or two friends, like, dude, I haven't written a song in three years. Um, yeah. And then it just turned around into this like, oh, I got it. I got. I still got it. Don't. What are you doing? Worrying, <laughs> worrying about this. Yeah. Um, and then I and then I wanted to because they, they were all brand new songs. I wanted to release it. Yeah. So I ended up putting it ahead of everything I was working on, and released it very quickly and as a surprise. Like basically, didn't tell anyone I was working on an album, let alone that I was going to release it. I didn't do any marketing, anything, um, and released the mono recording versions of it um, in uh, November, I think, or October, or November, um, and then backed away from it almost immediately and wanted to make a, a much more true and better version of the album um, and make stereo mixes with a whole other track listing um, and the vinyl is themed side A and side B um, and that's my mind is like a radio mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. it's like the first version that I released are, are, are drafts of the songs um, or sketches or rough ideas or whatever um, and then this version is like the proper studio mm -hmm. album mm -hmm. um yeah and it's you know it's crazy like I, e even at this like what, what's the date right now may 15th oh so it, see like i didn't even 
notice this or like celebrate it. Like I'm not ta- telling this story a lot on social media yet. I'm kind of, you know, talking about it in interviews and stuff, but uh, May 10th, I think was the, d- I think it was May 10th. So maybe May 11th was the day that I wrote my mind. is like radio last year. Okay. So like at this time last year, I had only written a few songs and the mm-hmm. album wasn't recorded. So it's like, Within a year, it went from not existing at all and having the worst writer's block I've ever had Mm -hmm. to having the album on vinyl and I'm, like, going on tour and it's the name of my tour. (laughs) Like, it's just kind of become this thing that, like... You know, when it's when it's over, it's over, and I'll move on to my my next albums. But like, I'm I'm yeah, I'm really like taking it to heart, like how cool the experience was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I feel like it goes to show, especially like as as an artist, um, you can't force your art. Like it just has to come to you, and when it is the right time for you to produce it or make or express your art, it just happens. Mm -hmm. Like. There's no way you can pull it out of you. It just has to come out naturally. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. 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 And like that, that 100% is how that happened with almost all these songs. Like I, I remember writing, like turning around in my head. That's, that's a recording that I was thinking about playing actually, which maybe we could do. Um, like I remember writing that in the kitchen. I was like in the dish pit and I remember in my head, like doing this scale do 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 like it's just thinking about it right like it came to me but then i like wrestled with it like i i worked on it it's not like the whole song like falls into my lap mm-hmm. but like something comes naturally and then you go oh now like that's exciting but now the real like work begins now mm-hmm. i have to like put lyrics to it or turn it into something or where's it going to go like where's the verse going to go into the chorus or what's the vibe going to be there um so it's yeah it's it's kind of crazy when when it happens um and it's and it's happened even after this album now there's a few new songs that i'm working on now that were the same thing all of a sudden it would just pop into my head at work and um what you have to do is take it seriously yeah um like don't if you think it's a good idea don't don't let it slip yeah yeah like you really have to take it seriously and like almost be a little a little crazy about it yeah. like you 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 know <laughs> like i would go around and make sure that i didn't like get into any conversations with people <laughs> at work just so because, you don't forget so that i don't forget yeah honestly so i don't forget like like the amount of voice notes that i have on my phone of me walking out of the the hospital uh where where i work not not because i was visiting for anyone who's tuning in um so like me walking out of the out of my workplace and i had been singing the song for like three hours or something trying not to forget like the melody i'm working from nine to five all day and then i'm working like i've got this rhythm i've got a melody i've got whatever i've got a key and i sing it into my phone as i'm walking out of work to make like like as if (laughs) As if I've been drowning and that's the first time I come up for air and I'm like, oh, it's going to be okay. There's no way I'll forget it now. Yeah. You know, that's that's the experience. Like, yeah. it's it's really wild. Uh, and, I... I don't, and I don't know how, you know, how much it happens, like, f- with other people. Um, I'm not one of those songwriters who sits down with a guitar and goes, I'm going to write a song today. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. That. I really don't do it that. It just happens at random moments, like happens in the at, shower. Hap- while you're at sleeping. Yeah. Absolute random times. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's inconvenient, to be honest. I'm not even kidding. Like sometimes it's kind of annoying to come up. Um, yeah. And then I'm like, oh no, <laughs> like I need to concentrate on. I've written songs while I was a server. I wrote Homesick, one of my best songs. I wrote while I was a server at Hard House. And the lyrics are written on my notepad where I was writing. The, down the soup orders for people and i'm like trying to do my job at the same time as having a really good melody in my head and trying to write the lyrics in my head while also writing them down on a piece of paper so i don't forget them mm-hmm. and like that was such a pain <laughs> in the ass like it's one of the best songs i've ever written and it really was so inconvenient to write it yeah because it just was that at that moment, and if I if I lost it, I wouldn't have that song. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? So um, yeah, like I so I did want to play like for an example, um, I did definitely want to play this song 
um, this recording of uh, the song Turning Around. This is one of the last songs I recorded on the album. So the first song I recorded was Mind Like a Radio. The next day I recorded All Day. The next day I recorded Dive. And then from there I kind of went, like I would spend an afternoon doing in my record collection that I recorded upstairs in my living room. It's like every, on my calendar, like every day had a different song. So Turning Around was a song I recorded the very last day of the spring of last year, which mm -hmm. was my deadline, like get everything done before the end of the season. Mm -hmm. um, and so turning around, um, let's just make sure that the, so that's the beginning. Yeah, so that's the beginning of mine, just like a radio. And then I'll go over to turning around. So here's the track three on side A, turning around. That is turning around. Um, I, yeah, I recorded I recorded that whole thing uh, in a in a whirlwind of a recording session in in one day. Um, I just started with the boom 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 boom. I turned that into a loop, which I don't do a lot. Like I don't make hip hop music, but I twice on this album I I made a loop um, that then I I built on top of, um, and that was one of them. It took, it took me like an hour and a half to get the right vibe of the loop. And I was so stressed. I was like, I need to finish recording this song. <laughs> so um, then by, by the time that I just started adding layer after layer after layer, like that's why there's so many m things moving around in that recording. 
because I was just throwing ideas in and then trying to like delete and erase and revert um, after that. But like, it's just, yeah, that's why the, I, there's so much energy because it's as if I'm like rushing to, to do it, like to get it done. Um, and I was saying, uh, like while we were listening to this in the studio, like this, if I was going to play this live, this is basically all I can do on the acoustic. <laughs> like, because the whole song, almost like a drone, like, like world's Indian music that has a drone kind of just like, just over and over again. And then, and then the melody moves on top of that, but like. George Harrison found this way to like extrapolate this into a lot of Beatles music where it the key of the song is essentially the chord progression of the song. You have just the same chord for so long over and over and over and over again that if I was playing it live, I haven't even done it yet because I don't really know how to do it, but it would be like all these dreams are going through my head. That can't be said. All these dreams are going through my head. Like that's all it would be. And then the chorus is, "Look at me, I'm turning around." Three chords. Yeah. So like that's it. That's it. It's like a Ramon song. Like there's, there. It's so it's so simple. But when you listen to the recording of it, there's just all of this stuff moving around. Mm-hmm. Um. So it is. It it is a weird one. It's a weird one. But that's why the recording process for me is so exciting because if I were to play that live you'd go "Eh, that's okay but then when I can mess around in the studio and turn it into that recording Mm -hmm. people have been saying it's their favorite song on the record a lot of people have been saying that and um, I didn't expect that at all Um, and so yeah it's it's uh, it's very (laughs) it's very fun to see what happens and we have a music video that we made me and my friends have a music video that we made of us dancing in like a light show like a, there's like lasers <laughs> and like a <laughs> disco ball and stuff and we're dancing and I'm really really sweaty and, and dancing really weird um, I'm not making it sound very appealing but it's 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 very fun it's awesome I, I showed my mom and she liked it so um, so we're going to be re- releasing that at some point during my tour probably next week or maybe the week after Nice. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we should listen to some songs, like a little sneak peek of what people might hear at Jethro's tonight. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Live tonight. Hey, Peterborough. Live music tonight at Jethro's. Uh, eight o'clock. We're starting. The Murphy Browns are playing. And then I'll be playing a very fun set because there's a piano. Um so I get to play a lot of the stuff that I don't usually get to play. Um, and then it uh, music will be done by 10, and I think it goes to karaoke after that, actually. Oh. Um, so if I'm lucky, I'll be able to break out my uh, my honky cat, <laughs> Elton John, uh, karaoke go-to. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, why don't I play just a, I won't play the whole song. I'll play just a snippet. Because if you want to hear the whole song, you can go online. I just last night just released a video filmed by Southern Souls of this song called Mind Like a Radio. It uh, is what we were talking about before, of course. It's the namesake of the tour, of the album. Um, and again, like this version is similar to the AM version on the album. Uh, I, tr- I did like a FM and AM radio version of this song. Um, so this version is the AM version. It's the acoustic version. Oh, nice. So when you listen to the first song on the record, like I basically didn't even play any guitar on it really other than the riff. And then most of it is based on like rock and roll piano. So it's my Motown version. Um, but this, uh, yeah, basically is that like you wake up at four in the morning and you've got a song stuck in your head and you can't go back to bed and then you have to go to work for 13 and a half hours. But hey, at least the song's good. <laughs> um, this is This is that song. Change the 
<laughs> that was so good. The short <laughs> version. I, I I really just like skipped a couple verses and stuff. So, um, but yeah, go go on to go on to YouTube. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, go on go on to YouTube and um, and and find uh, Caleb Heichel, Mind Like a Radio. There's a, a video of me playing it in uh, Hughes Room, which is a music venue right across the street from my home studio where I've been living in Toronto in Riverdale. Um, and there's also another video. Um, coming of this song, Dive. Um, I'll just play the, just a real small s- snippet of it. It's a. So obviously a lot different. <laughs> this one I, I wrote on a much sadder day. Not on Saturday, on a sad day. On a much more sad day. Surprise me with a smile, the one I belong to. Surprise me with a smile, dear depression, I blame you. Surprise me with a smile, or I'll stay here for a while. Surprise me with a smile, I met my best with you. Surprise me with a smile Show my other shade of blue Surprise me with a smile I can hold my head up high And I won't die mm-hmm. On and on and so on and so on. <laughs> I wish that went on and on. Mm-hmm. That was There's, so the, good. The, the, thank you, thank you. The, the recording, <laughs> the recording of that song is one of my favorites on the record. Um, I only I made the recording of that song in um, like three hours. Maybe. What was this one called? Dive. It's called Dive. Dive. Um, uh, and I, I made the recording of that song very quickly because it's just it's a lot of. Like it's mainly it's it's that and it's. It's me doing this on the guitar, but then it's just these. That song I tried to make like Gordon Lightfoot um, recordings because I had been listening to so much of it. Sit Down Young Stranger and, and my favorite records of his. And so many of those recordings have like f- five or six acoustic guitars just riffing all over the place. And it sounds so beautiful. And that's a direct inspiration. Um, the other thing I forgot to say, like this whole thing where I went to Yorkville played a gig in Yorkville and then my writer's block was broken and after playing at the Joni I had this 
all of a sudden, oh my God, I had this like <laughs> burst of, of inspiration. It was, I remember it was like three or four days after Gordon Lightfoot had passed away. And I then went and played a gig in Yorkville, right around the corner from the riverboat, where he had made a career as a famous Canadian songwriter. And he had just passed away. And I was really sad about it. Um, I worked at Massey Hall, which was like his home away from home. So I had a lot of connection and, and, and um, emotion um, uh, tied to it. Um, and honestly, like, like the Robert Johnson, like, went to the crossroads to, like, sell his soul to the devil. It kind of, like, story, like, I, I really walked away from that whole thing being like, what just happened? Like, like, did I go to Yorkville and, like, somehow by, like, <laughs> taking the cab over to Yorkville, like, I, like, somehow inherited some <laughs> kind of, like, did Gordon Life would give me, like, a high five as I drove by or something? Mm. Um, cause that's what it really felt like. It, it was, it was so cool, like so cool, so crazy. And, um, so I, that song I knew I wanted to, I made it, I played it as fast as I possibly could because that's also how his songs sounded. Um, I mean, it could have been any other, it could have been like, surprise me with a smile, the one I belong to. Like, if I wanted to make it a slow, sad song. Yeah. It is a very sad song. It's a song about depression. It's a song about um, what, like, I and so many other people have mm. gone through. But I wanted it to sound beautiful and interesting. And so I just, I played it as fast as I could, put guitars all over it, put a beautiful piano, little piano part in it. Um, and last week on the day that my album came out, the song was picked up to be played on Sirius XM. Um, mm. and, and I was like, what is happening? It's like... <laughs> The saddest song on the record, the most simple song on the record, has no drum kit and no percussion at all. Yeah. Um, but there's something about it. There's something about the vibe and, and everything. So that video is also coming out. Um, and, um, I mean, other than that, like, you know, the record really just has, um, you know, this song is a song that I'll be playing at every show. And if you can bring your, your, your foot stomps, and you're clapping and you're sing along uh, vocal chords um, to join me. I'll just play the the chorus of it so that you mm -hmm. you know. It's called In My Record Collection, and um, it's about vinyl. Like it literally starts with I got a call from Bob Dylan. He said, Hey man, how you doing? I said, Hey Zimmerman, I'm doing fine. Thanks for dropping me a line. And I got a message from Joni. She's blue, but the smile's still showing. The big yellow taxi's still rolling along. They paved it all up, and it's gone. And then the chorus goes, Here I am, with all of my friends, in my record collection. Come on by with my friends and I, spinning around, having a time. So it really is just about like all the records in your record collection can you can be alone and hang out with your friends all night like you've got you've got so a million buddies of yours are sitting in your record collection if you put the record on like you're in good company. So the the verses of that just keep going from like Motown to blues to mm -hmm. talking about new albums but the recording of that song was done in my living room um and it's just full of like foot stomps, claps, sing-alongs, harmonies mm -hmm. and everything. So that song I'm going to be singing every night of the tour. Mm -hmm. I have to because it's just so fun. Yeah. Um, I very quickly have to say yeah. that I love your range, like just the different styles of music. Oh, that each song is mm -hmm. refreshing and new and like you're just able to nail every single style of music. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. And what's, what's your favorite style of music for you um i love dive a lot yeah like so maybe, maybe more, more folky mellow, yeah, mellow yeah, folky yeah yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, cool we have about 30 seconds left i'll do a quick outro mm -hmm. um you've been listening to open mic radio this is mrdl harvajanka and i've been with caleb heichel <laughs> and we are broadcasting through the facilities of trench radio 92.7 cfff fm in peterborough negoji canada and very quickly, the weather currently is 17 degrees Celsius, um, humidity 72%, and dew point, whatever that means, 12.2. <laughs> well, yeah, tonight at Jethro's. Jethro's at 8 o'clock, yeah. Yeah, Caleb Heichel with amazing music. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. Thank you so much for having me, Mimi. <laughs>